Perfect. But thank you yeah. so much for joining me and um, for sharing your work, which is beautiful. Uh, Invisible Octopus. It's so evocative and a little haunting. You yes, know? It is. it is. What was it like doing the collaboration that made it possible for you to do this work? Yeah, well, there, there's two two different things there. The the yeah. um, the the project I did with, with other people with disabilities is a few years ago when I was still able to to teach, and I was called Life Outside the Box, and I suppose that was all the start of this whole puppetry um, adventure. Really, I um, facilitated the group of. I think it was about a dozen people with disabilities. I was one of them. Um, and we made nine puppets and we stepped out of the disability box and it was teaching to make the puppets and the story really evolve um, while we were making over eight, eight months, I think it took all together. Yeah, it was a long, like once, once a week, I can only teach for about an hour at a time. And, uh, but because it was slow, we we really worked on the puppets, but we also had time to talk about our disability without talking about disability. You know what I mean? Yeah. We we were much more open about what it actually meant to be disabled and what society did to us or how we feel and how we were treated. And because of the conversations we had, we decided to make the story about puppets stepping out of the disability box, i.e. us stepping out of the disability box. And what we real like what we chosen as well for that project was that we filmed the puppets coming out of this big disability box, like all quotes about disability and all the challenges that we had. And Got we it. filmed it in a shopping center. Great. So that was Conscious. Initially, we thought we'd do it in a beautiful place, and then we said, "No, actually, we need the interaction from from the crowd." Like mm. it was yeah. amazing yeah. because suddenly people talked to us. Yes, which they usually don't. Yes. They usually talk to our carers, the person who's pushing the chair. We're not complimentous. We're not really able to to tell our story. This time, people talked to us because of the puppets. And that project then got the attention of Emma Fisher. She is a doctor of puppetry and disability. She came across my work. She was, I, I was invited to give a lecture at the, the first Broken Puppet Symposium on puppetry, disability and health here in Cork, which is about an hour away from me. And I met, two dozen people, maybe all puppeteers, all relators, all researchers, all relators with puppetry and disability. Amazing. Like oh, a world I was part of and I didn't know I was part of. It was absolutely astonishing. That's the only word I have for it. Astonishing. It's like finding home. Oh, it was. It was like, oh my God, I, I, I'm part of this and I didn't know I was part of this. And it brought back memories of wanting to go to puppeteers in Holland when I was a child or when I was a, a young adult and I never did and I this whole like this whole mix of puppetry to use it to explain disability and health was massive and it's been let me see it was 2017 so it's been three years of growth for all of us because we ended up publishing a book there's it's an online journal but it also it also came out in a publication and it is a valuable resource and that came about because of Emma's brilliant mind last year Emma I asked Emma to help me to find new ways for me to explore my puppetry because I became unable to hold my marionette puppets so I made mm. another puppet yeah. Then I became unable to even use that one. And like, could she help me? My illness was, you know, taking more of its toll. And could she help me to find a way that I can move forward? And the invisible octopus was a long, long, long journey. But what came out of it in the end, a year later, 
not planned, but it happened, was the shadow puppetry. May I show and show the work for you? Absolutely, yeah. All right, is the invisible octopus that you yeah. created with the shadow puppetry. And I did, like the, the oh when we first um, met you in the mentoring, uh, Emma did mention um, shadow puppetry, but what it actually did for me wasn't shadow puppetry, it was the word shadow. And oh. I had I had written this the story about my great grandmother, and I called it the "Living in the Shadows of an Invisible Octopus." Hmm. Um, so, what the word "shadow" brought about the octopus, and I thought the octopus was a really powerful way to explain the illness, like that. It is kind of like having tentacles on my body who are manipulating my body or have control over my body. Mm. They, um, you know, I'm, I'm, it's like a puppet animating my my life. Like, can I can I sit up? Can I stand up? Can I? Would it just drop me? Will it like with the octopus it just rests on my chest and takes my breath away, as I explained in, in the yes. image of there? And so for me, it was the, the octopus that came out of the mentoring. But wow. it was only in the very, very last mentoring day that we, Emma, really introduced me to the use of shadow puppetry. And she put um, an overbed table on my bed with mm -hmm. a big overhead projector, mm -hmm. you know, big bulky things that they used to use in, in for lecturing before yeah. all this Zoom thing and everything came about. Yes. And she attached the screen on the end of my bed and we just had like images and bits of nature and we, we manipulated them onto the glass and, put, and projected them onto the screen. And it was an amazing art form because I could do it. I don't need anybody to do it. You know, I, I could create this story out of such simple methods. So I totally fell in love with it. Got myself an overhead projector, set it up and in my room and um, with, my, with my PA, we, we perfected like the distance and how my, my wheelchair fit behind it and so I could actually access this amazing easy tool at will and what I could also do was I could cut little puppets. Oh that's wonderful. This is actually really it looks really big when you see it like that but it's yes, well, of course. the size of it it's only yeah. and what I realized I was able to do was cut from paper yeah my little articulate. my little figures and little birds yeah. and even make a little bird with let me see I don't know if you can see that who could actually Oh, so you've got articulated wings. Oh, that's awesome. And it looks a bit like, you know, slightly suggestive there, but yeah, I well, <laughs> didn't really do fly. But I realized that I could cut very detailed images. Yeah. With my little tiny little scissors lying down. I didn't need mm. any help from anybody to do my work. And these images that are in the, in that film were, are all a result of these making these images, putting them on a projector, moving them around a little, and just get this story in. Like each image might take me five or ten minutes to just kind of play around with. Yeah. And then with the poem, I just put them all together and there it was. Suddenly I had this story that I didn't intend to make like this, but it's, it's probably the most powerful projection of my work that I have created it's, over two decades of work. I was going to say powerful. I mean, and so, well, first off, so powerful to find that you have something that you've got this control over yeah. that is easy, that is within your grasp to make. Yeah. And yeah. that tells such a powerful story. Yeah. And you could use like this I, thing to make several stories. 
Oh yeah, I mean it's endless, really. Yeah. Uh, like what what I really wanted was work with the poem, with the invisible octopus poem, and make a really proper animation with you know really mm. perfect movement. And when I suddenly created this one out of the twelve images that I had prepared for an exhibition. And I just put them together with the 12 stanzas of the poem. And I was like, yeah, it's good, but it's not perfect. Yeah. And then everybody said, it's because it's not perfect. It's much more powerful. Here's the thing. Perfection is boring. (laughs) Okay, fair enough. enough. So I let it go. But it's gorgeous. Are you pleased with it? Yes, I am now. Like when I... I often need to hear other people's responses before yeah. I understand actually what I made or what I've done. Yeah. And the responses were like also from professionals who do shadow puppetry for a profession and they were blown away by my images, even the very, very basic sample pieces that I made. And I was like, wow, I'm, I'm doing something kind of cool and I didn't you didn't mean it but it, it's how it worked I, it, it just happened and I think it's because I have no training in it I have no understanding of it I just do whatever yeah. comes to mind and it, it works so yes I am when I when I was able to let it go and to put it out there I must say I'm proud of it and I'm immensely proud at the reception it's getting and I was saying the other day I'm doing a lecture with students in in Chile having this film is kind of a sneaky way of informing people about the challenges of illness and disability because they might not want to read an article yes but this way and that's with all art I think but it's a very sneaky way and it's not made because of that but it's yeah. it has an added bonus that, that you you educate people without them knowing they are being educated it's a, the power it's... of the story too yeah. you know yeah. and and it is uh, art is a wonderful way to start a conversation oh big right? time yeah yeah i mean people respond to it in their own way like you know, at, at that lecture, like people were like, yeah, but we all have a kind of an octopus in our life. We all have, mm. many people with mental illness have responded to my work or- I would imagine. Any kind of, yeah. So we all have octopuses and we all are stuck in boxes as well. 